What is your wrong place at the wrong time story? My school takes kids on trips around the world for March break. Guess who happened to be in Japan for that big earthquake tsunami a few years back? A group of Canadian teenage and teachers. One teacher that was there, all the students are probably in college now, tells of when they were in a bus when the quake hit. And the driver was swerving left and right a little. Which they thought was a joke. They were laughing until they noticed the skyscrapers flailing about. Apparently the Japanese were running up to them in the street mid-quake to apologize for the earthquake as well. I once almost got kicked out of high school. I was at my physics club meeting. It ran late. And I was heading to the car. Some girl popped out of a room. Just as I walked by. Startling me. I jumped a bit and gasped. Kept moving. Next day. Called to the principal's office. I was accused of. Get this. Videotaping girls changing. Now. Being 17 at the time. I would have loved to have that magical video. But alas. It was 2002 and no one had any such recording device. And no tape. I was still made to serve a week suspension due to how this looked. Double quote. It was private. Catholic school. Nothing at all could be done. Ever. About anything. There are no rules or justice in those schools unless you are popular or have money. I was just about to head home after a night out in London. So I was casually standing at the coat check waiting my turn. However. I happened to be standing at the coat check when a guy was being thrown out of the club. This guy happened to be a little crazy. Because as he went past me. He grabbed my shoulder. Went to headbutt me. And at the same time bit a chunk out of my lip. I ended up needing plastic surgery on my lip. And about 5 years on I still have no feeling in that part of my lip. A few years ago my girlfriend and I had just moved into a new apartment in a really nice area. About 2 months later. We had a brick thrown through a back window. But assumed it was some neighborhood kid being a douche. A few days after that we had 6 guys with guns break into the unit while we were there. Pistol whipped us. And took most of our electronic CTC. They robbed the place because the previous tenant was a drug dealer who apparently owed them a bunch of money and they didn't get the memo that he had skipped town. Damn that's scary. I worked with a guy who robbed drug dealers. Not only would he rob them he would fck their shti up and he told me that one time he actually took a shti on someone's record player. The guy did 12 years in the old Montana state prison. During my freshman year of high school. There was a huge food fight and a ton of actual fighting that happened. Just to give you an idea of how bad it was. A newspaper for the Southern California area wrote an article calling them riots and said they were over the election. Neither of those were true. But we had a lot of police on campus. And they shortened our passing period to about 2 minutes. During the big food fight. My ass was just trying to get away from everything. That is. Until some asshole decided to throw a rock the size of a baseball at my back. I had a huge welt on my back for about a year. And then some asshole teacher tried to give me detention for participating in the food fight. Since when is a rock food? I was at a party the other night. And one of the guys there told me this story. His dad decided to backpack from England to Thailand in 1979. By late December 1979. He had made it roughly halfway to his destination. Which put him in Afghanistan. On the morning of the 24th of December. 1979. He and his friends got up. And were planning to do some rock climbing. They got in the jeep of a guy that they paid to bring them out to rock climb. When they got in. He told them that they weren't going rock climbing that day. And instead he was heading for Pakistan. And they could join him if they wanted to. Why the sudden change of plans? The 24th of December. 1979 is the day that the Soviets invaded Afghanistan. This guy's father has pictures of him standing on a hill with a few dozen or so Soviet tanks in the field below him. Edit. I haven't got the pictures. As I said in the beginning of the post. This story was told to me by a guy that I randomly met at a party. And will probably never see speak to again. I don't know his last name. Or how to get a hold of him. 
So unfortunately. This story is all that we've got. This happened to a co-worker's son. He was outside smoking a cigarette and apparently there was a police chase going on that he didn't know about. The police dog jumped over the fence into his backyard and attacked him. Really messed up his arm from what I understand. The cops end up throwing him in the police car. After realizing that they had the wrong guy they let him go and literally told him well maybe you should have stayed inside. He's currently going through a lawsuit with them and is probably going to get a big settlement. Because they never even filed a police report or anything. When I was somewhere around 25 a few of my friends and myself spent a week in Daytona Beach and had a great time. Driving back to NY. Somewhere in northern Georgia we decide to grab some food in a truck stop. After our greasy burgers and fries we exited the diner and was heading across the parking lot we came upon two men. Nervously transferring stacks of cash from the trunk of one car to another. Both men had handguns holstered beneath their jackets and as they noticed us, noticing them. One of the men made a quick movement to grab his pistol but the other man stopped him and they just ceased what they were doing and stared quite intently at us. If there was ever a wrong place at the wrong time. This was it. All of us acted as if we were oblivious to the men's actions but we. And when I say we I mean everyone, the two men included. Knew better. We quickly made our way to our car and left. For the next 4-6 hours. None of us in the car said a word. My neck was sore as hell from craning it back and forth constantly scanning for their car which I visualized speeding up along next to us. As we traveled down the highway. We never saw the men again. Finally a place to share this. When I was in kindergarten I went to a daycare and it was brutal. Every man for himself. One day we got let out to recess and I. Still young and innocent. Sat in the grass right in front of the back door we got out of the school by. The teacher sat down in front of me about 20 feet away by the mulch pin to watch the other kids and I was just relaxing in the sun. When I see some scissors fly over my shoulder and land a few feet to the side of the teacher in her chair. Now. There were some kids around me and one of them threw it but she turned around to them all playing and my dumb young self staring at her. She assumed it was me and made me to inside and sit with the principal for the rest of our 30 minutes recess. Now I didn't give her fck because I was a thug anyway but I did eternally resent that lady for the rest of my childhood for not completing a proper investigation. I told her that I didn't do it and she didn't believe me. What type of a world do we live in that you can't even trust your kindergarten teachers? But I guess I can understand. I kinda feel bad for hating her all that time when I can understand now. Wherever you are out there M's. Linda. FCK you a little less today. Driving down a three lane street in El Salvador. I was in the middle lane. As I come around a curve. There is a police truck parked with seven heavily armed cops jumping out to go for a raid in a ghetto. The police are in the left lane and there is too much traffic in the right lane to change lanes. The cop in the passenger side opens his door without looking and I slam on the brakes to avoid killing him. My windows were to tinted so he couldn't see me and all he knows is that there is an SUV parked a beater away as he is about to do a dangerous raid. Needless to say. I was looking down the barrel of an assault rifle very quickly. I was playing in the street with some friends in high school. One friend was having a gay ole time kicking his shoes off to see how far they would go. Well. MR. Soccer man decided to kick it low and hard in my general direction. Promptly nailing me directly in the nuts. I rolled around on the ground for quite a while writhing in pain. Bonus. Sitting on my porch minding my own business when I was younger, elementary school. While my stepdad and brother practice pitching a baseball. Well. One thing leads to another and the ball rolls off of his finger weird. And the ball hits me right in the nuts. Several years ago. Buying cocaina in Amsterdam. Was pretty sly about it. Or so I thought. Bought it. Then a few seconds later a cop came up and asked me if I'd just bought drugs. The bag was still in my hand so I slyly tossed it into the gutter behind me. I was beside myself. I told the cop I was going to buy some but change my mind. I became very apologetic and said I was from America and thought all drugs were legal in the Netherlands. 
He was very nice and let me off with a warning and a lecture. Went back a half hour later and grabbed the bag from the gutter. Lol. Shti coke. Wasn't worth the risk. Back in my stupid days. One of my dad's friends was at a party and the cops showed up. He was facing the other way and he fit the description of someone that robbed a house earlier that day. So the cop told him to hold his hands up and not move. So even before my dad's friend turned around so the cop could verify that he was the suspect the cop took out his baton and hit him and broke his hand and wrestled him to the ground. Then found out he wasn't the guy. Pretty shitty situation of wrong place. Wrong time. Was at the camping area of a large outdoor music festival. Started throwing a football around with my friend in the passages between the clusters of tents. Ball missed me and went into a semi-open party tent. I go in after it. Only to find it between some huge guys covered in white powder with my ball in the middle next to an empty clip bag. It was coke. I am only alive due to the dealer being close by and didn't want the attention as he sold a lot on the festival. He gave them more for free basically. A little late but screw it I hardly ever post. A friend and I were smoking in his car when he mentioned a name and asked if I knew it. I said no but asked who it was. Apparently it was his old friend who died in a car crash. He was driving in his convertible on the freeway with his friend in passenger and his mom in back in the carpool lane. Then out of nowhere from the other end of the freeway. A giant tire flew off a semi and hit the driver's side of his car. He was killed on impact but his friend and mom were fine. His mom said I was putting pieces of my son's face back together. Thinking it would work. And his friend in the car said that if he was one second faster or one second slower everything would be different. If he had lost his keys and found them five seconds later or picked up a stray nickel on the ground he would have been fine. That really made stoned me think about shit. One of my friends was finishing year 12, last year of high school in Australia, and had his muck up day. Which involves a scavenger hunt. Where you complete tasks for points. 50 points for stealing a local sign etc. He came over to my house at about 2pm in the afternoon to borrow a balaclava as he needed it for one of the tasks. I walked out of my house to meet him on the road wearing the balaclava as I thought it would be funny. I spoke to him for about a minute while wearing it. Then handed it over. Around then I noticed a family a few doors up from my house staring and pointing at us. I am a fairly shy person so I said see ya later and walked inside. A few minutes later my dad pulled up at home, he is a real estate agent, and told me that some people staying in units he rents out house was robbed about 10 minutes ago and they saw someone in a balaclava walking around the front of our house. A few phones. A laptop and some handbags got stolen and I had to walk up the road and explain the situation to the people. I still don't think they fully believe that I didn't do it either because they were so shocked at being robbed in the broad daylight. No one will probably see this because it's an old thread and I wasted like 10 minutes you. Took a different route home one day to pick up my car because I got drunk the previous night and left my car in a parking lot. Ended up crossing paths with a group of close friends and stayed there for a while. Tragedy ensued as a construction crumbled down upon us. Injuring two and killing three. I was unharmed. But had my back turned and didn't even see it happen. When I turned around I saw it had crumbled literally two inches from my feet. To this day I still don't know if me being there made us stay longer in that particular place. Worst day of my life. I went to the wrong classroom on the first day in high school. When I realized about two minutes in. I raised my hand. My hand stayed up for way too long after the teacher noticed me, I had to keep switching hands, and she kept giving me glaring looks. When she finally decided to give in and call on me, I told her I was in the wrong class. She said too bad. I couldn't leave halfway through. So I had to stay for the rest of the period and miss the entirety of my real first class. Bitch. I still kick myself that I was shy and not bold enough to just leave. My school has a housing option where you live in small cabins on a nearby lake. Also at this location there are several outdoor classrooms and a fire pit. I was living in town in the summer between school years with a friend who was moving into these cabins that year. The week before the semester started we decided to drive out there to check out the cabin. 
We forgot that one of the lunch ladies lives at a house on site year round. And has a hot tub. As we pull up she doesn't notice us. Jumps out of the hot tub wearing nothing. Squats. And starts peeing. After sitting there for a second we slowly started backing out. To this day I can't make eye contact with her when I go to eat at the school. After a long night of drinking at the bars I stumbled back to my dorm. Somewhere on this journey I f ked up my hand. Like I needed sticks bad. Being drunk I didn't even notice I was a stumbling bloody mess so I decided I should keep the night going with my friends who live in the dorm next door. Now the best way to drunkenly enter a room is to kick open the door and yell freeze with your finger gun drawn like I always do but it just so happens the police were in their room giving my friends a citation for weed. They didn't even flinch and casually asked where I live. I told them I'd be next door and almost sprinted out of there to my friend's dorm nearby. Surprised I didn't get shot or at least questioned. I was playing baseball with a bunch of other kids in the neighborhood. I hit the ball into the woods. So I went to go get it. After carefully stepping over a shitty ton of thorns. I find it. I lean over to pick it up and as I grab it. The bush in front of me starts shaking violently. I freeze. It shakes again. Then I hear my sister behind me. I glance back and see her in the middle of all of the thorns. She whispers to run on the count of three. She counts and on three we book it out of there. We burst out of the edge of the woods and yell for everyone to run. No one has any idea what's going on. But they all scatter. Of course my sister and I live farthest away. I was pretty fast so I made it home and immediately tried telling my mom what happened. But I was out of breath and had trouble explaining. My sister finally makes it in the house. She's not very fast and she has asthma. I feel like an ass for leaving her behind. But luckily whatever it was didn't follow her. She starts telling my mom the same thing about shaking bushes. My mom insists it was just a dog. Whatever was on the other side of that bush was huge. We knew it wasn't a dog. I'm not sure if my mom actually believed that explanation or if she was just trying to calm us down. About an hour later we get a call from a neighbor that she saw a bear and a cub in her yard. Now that I'm older I realize just how lucky I am because that could have gone very wrong. Locked in a jail cell with over 30 strangers in a town I wasn't from. Large concert. Many arrests. I was drinking underage. It turns out I am the spitting image of one of the local drug dealer gangster assholes. Everyone in there was either talking to me like I was a rock star. Or wanted to kill me. I tried to explain that I wasn't that guy and everyone just thought I was trying to hide my identity. The story is much more bizarre than that. But who the hell is even going to read this comment? About a year before I realized I needed glasses I was at a school trip for a week. The building was somehow built into a cliff. With a plaza leaning over it from which you could look into some of the windows. Now as I later found out some of those windows lead to the girls showers. A group of friends were standing there. Gawking and shouting that we should all get over there. Many boys with smiles. And then some girls with disgust on their faces were gathering there. Most guys realized what was going to happen and bolted. Me and my best friends were still there when the teacher came. I got detention along with them for something I, unfortunately, didn't see. And I still didn't realize I needed glasses, yet. A friend of mine told me this one it's more of a just barely not in the wrong place at the wrong time story. Back in the 70s. His mom was a young woman working at a diner. There was a guy who would come in on a regular basis. Super friendly. Good looking guy. Always chatting with her and the other waitresses. Over time. He apparently became as much a part of the place as any of the workers. One night. Friend's mom's not feeling great. She phones up a co-worker of hers to fill in for her. And the co-worker agrees. She goes in to cover for her. And reportedly gets a ride home at the end of the night by their most charming regular. Next day. She's gone. No one hears from her. And eventually she turns up dead. Turns out the charming guy is Ted Bundy. He'd been using the diner to pick out targets and lure the young women there away so he could. Well do his Ted Bundy thing. Had my friend's mom gone to work that night.
Chances are she would have been the one getting a ride home from him and bam no more mom. No more friend. Good thing she got sick. I suppose. When I was 6. It was bonfire night and I was meant to be asleep. Of course me and my twin brother were still awake watching the fireworks. My mum came in and asked us if we wanted to go out. We went to our next door neighbor's house and stood outside. We were having a really good time. Then one of the fireworks didn't explode. It fell out the sky and bounced right off the pavement. Right next to my neck. Then exploded. My neck was on fire and my mum rushed me into a shower. It was crazy. Six months later I got out of hospital. So many surgeries as well. I'll still be getting surgery until I'm 18 or even older. Oh and my brother got PTSD or something like that. It was shit. I was first on the scene at a single car drunk driving accident. It was about 2. 30 in the morning and I was heading over to a friend to take a shower because my hot water heater broke the day before. My friend had just gotten off of work. Which is why I was out so late. As I was passing over a bridge I randomly see the sky laying face down on the pavement. I call 911. And let him know he is not alone. He unfortunately died before they arrived. Apparently he was the passenger in a SUV and the driver had been going about 80 miles per hour when they hit the bridge. He tried jumping out before it went off the bridge and the SUV had whipped around and hit him. Happened recently with a friend. During the recent influx of refugees in Austria. He's from India. So quite often he gets confused as Middle Eastern. He was on his way back home from the supermarket. When he needed to pee badly. So he walked into a nearby bar. As he was walking inside he noticed a commotion going on in there. Also there were quite a few cops going inside as he walked in. Turns out an Afghan refugee had swiped some lady's phone and was caught in the act by an onlooker. He was refusing to give back the phone and kept insisting he didn't steal it so the cops were called in. My friend unfazed by the commotion was emptying his bladder in the urinal when there was a knock on the door. Polizzi. So he got out immediately and they asked him for his identification papers. He's a student there. So he produced his EU permit and the necessary documents. Despite doing this he was singled out and frisked in front of everyone. When one of the victim's friends said he wasn't anywhere near when the swipe happened. They let him go but he was really disturbed by this. They eventually found the phone hidden behind that refugee seat and he, Afghani guy, was handcuffed and taken away. Edit. Grammar. I used to play baseball back in high school. When it would rain we would practice on the basketball courts in our gym. My buddy and I are playing catch and at this point we're at opposite ends of the court throwing fairly hard. As I release a throw, I notice the door behind my friend opening. As it opens outward it pushes his arm forward causing him to narrowly miss the ball. On the other side of that door was someone walking to the girls locker room holding a cake and balloons. As it was her birthday, the ball laser beamed through the doorway and nailed this poor girl in the forehead. She dropped sending the cake to the ground and the balloons to the roof of the gym. She ended up being okay. Aside from having baseball seam imprints on her head for the next few days. Summer 1998. We were in Washington DC on vacation checking out various monuments and whatnot. Smithsonian. Washington Monument. Vietnam Memorial. They had the White House open for people who wanted to check it out. It was kinda cool. One day we go to the Capitol building for a tour. There's a big area with a lot of statues of notable people donated by the various states. And that leads to another area and you can look down and see people entering the area with the statues. We hear two or three loud bangs and assume the statues had fallen over somehow. But people were f king panicking bellows hauling ass to get out of there. Some poor girl gets knocked down and dragged out of the way. Turns out some guy had run into the building and started shooting. Killing two officers before he was wounded. Got stuck there for hours. I was only 9 at the time so the severity of the situation didn't really register. I kept asking my parents why we weren't allowed to leave. My brother has autism. He is also extremely overweight. His weight and mental disabilities have handicapped his ability to clean himself after he uses the bathroom and sometimes you have to help him out. So, 
I'm in the living room and I see my brother run into the bathroom flapping his arms. He thinks he is a bird. This usually means he is about to shti his brains out. You are usually able to tell he is done when he stops his shitting squeal which is this god awful noise he makes as he passes his fking his lard logs through his asshole. After the squealing stops. I give him a minute and walk in to get the cleaning done. I walk into the bathroom to do the chore. But my brother insists that he can do it himself and that he made a invention. Alright. I give him some space and I hear some grunting. But that would be normal if you had to get through all your fking fat rolls to touch your ass. So. I walk in to check on him and I see that he has a quarter of the plunger handle up his asshole. He stares into my eyes and doesn't say a goddamn word. He continues to put said handle up his ass while staring into my eyes. He died of cancer two years later because of unrelated reasons. Guy got mugged in front of my house in Seattle. Used to be a rough neighborhood. I was bent down behind a trash can a few feet away. Pulling weeds. Heard some scuffling and a struggle. Stood up because I was curious and saw an older guy on the ground with a younger guy kneeling on his back. Digging his wallet out of his pocket. I happened to be holding my steel shovel. Mugger looked up. Saw me looming over them with a huge shovel. Yelped. Sprang backwards. Crashed into a telephone pole. Bounced forward from it onto his face on the sidewalk while I watched. Just standing there. Holding my shovel. He looked up at me. Terrified. As if I'd done all of this to him and started apologizing. I grunted. Said my F King Street. Not yours. FCK off. Dude scrambled backwards from me on all fours and ran off like I was shooting at him. Wrong place. Wrong time. Hilarious in retrospect. But at the time I was just puzzled. Concerned and grumpy. I was a pretty typical midwestern 19 year old guy. I had a shitty job at a restaurant. Lived in a shitty house with some roommates. Partied. The usual. Well part of my usual was to ride my bike to and from work. And I'd often stop by the river and smoke a bowl before I got home. So I just completed this bowl smoking ritual and had adopted some high volume atmosphere on my headphones. I was pedaling my bike down the sidewalk. Higher than giraffe pussy. Basically staring at the sidewalk in front of me. You know. Living the life. I'm about 3 blocks from home and there is an intersection coming up so my attention shifts from the 10 feet of sidewalk in front of me for the first time in blocks. I look to my left and see some movement of bodies wearing black. Look to my right and see a line of cop cars. And subsequently. A line of cops. Guns drawn. I was pedaling through the very start of a no knock. Lethally armed. SWAT supported raid. My mouth opened just enough to show my surprise and immediate regret. Of the six cops on my right. One just slowly shook his head in disbelief the others stared in awe. I didn't breath till I was out of the potential crossfire and didn't look back till I got home. TLDR high as giraffe pussy. Caught in a pig orgy.